Hi there, everybody. It has been some time since I did a Facebook Live by myself. Um, so I'm happy to be here. I was actually a little bit nervous um, before starting it because I wasn't sure if I was going to remember how to do everything. <laughs> so um, I'm here. So as you're joining, it's really sweet. I'm going to go over some things today that I've been studying, that I've been observing, witnessing, if you will, um, in myself and in the world around me. Um, some things from the book that I'm, I've been working on. Um, I'm here in Koh Phangan in uh, Thailand, on a little island here, um, a little quartz island with a pyramid on it, apparently, is what I was told. Um, which I haven't got to actually step onto yet, but I'm going to in the next couple days. If you guys can hear me well, can you give me a thumbs up or a comment or something? Just because for me, every time I do one of these lives, there's like a little bit of anxiety of like, is the technology going to work? Do I know what I'm doing? Am I going to be muted? So just let me know that you can hear me. And um, also as you're joining either now or later, just kind of let me know where you are in the world so I can feel into where these messages are transmitting. I've got some thumbs up. This is great, loving that, so good. Okay, so I had put a little poll on my um, personal wall and in the New Earth Ascending community page, um, just asking what people wanted me to talk about, wanting to share about. Um, and so I'm gonna comment on those particular things and um, let me drop into it. So over the last few weeks, I've been reading a book called The Keys of Enoch, uh, the Book of Knowledge, I think is actually, The Book of Knowledge, The Keys of Enoch, which is different than other Eno Enochian books, just so that everybody has that clear. It's a, the book that I'm reading is a white book. I don't think I have it with me. It's a white book. It has the dove on the front and gold, and it's sending gold and light into the hands of... Um, yeah, just hands are receiving the light. So I highly, highly recommend this book. It's very advanced as far as quantum physics go, as, as how the light of consciousness is organized, how the hierarchies organize and um, support evolution and organize knowledge and wisdom and, you know, light um, all throughout the multiverse. So it's really honestly about five to 10% of each chapter um, I'm understanding. Most of it I'm having to look up a lot of words. Also, it's, it's very, um, very much based in Judaism. It's referencing the Torah a lot, the Torah or a lot, which I didn't study so much. My, my religious upbringing was uh, Methodist Christian, so we really focused primarily on the teachings of Jesus. Um, and then would kind of go back into the Old Testament just to kind of support Jesus' messages. So I had a really, I love my church. <laughs> uh, didn't love the whole gay thing, um, shaming the gay people. That's why I eventually left. But um, okay, so the book is super powerful, has lots of codes and information specifically um, about these times now and the transformation that's happening now and then some plans about what's happening in the future. So if you're one of those people that's really like, I want to know what's happening next. Tell me what's happening next. Where, blah, you know, all that stuff. I highly recommend this book um, and really start at the beginning and then make your way through slowly. Take your time. It's a lot for the nervous system and the brain to take in. Um, so read a chapter, put it down, go do something like silly and fun, and then come back and then do it again, just so you can pace it out. It's a lot. Um, what I'm loving is how much of this is matching up with my um, with the quantum healing sessions that I've been doing over the last um, three plus years. So that's been really special to get a deeper story, another perspective, support, all that kind of stuff, more clarity. So it's really going to help me with this, uh, with the book that I'm writing um, so that I can use these, these powerful teachings of universal truth, multiversal truth, um, to support um, the transcripts of the, of the sessions that I've been doing over the last few years. So I want to speak to is, um, and it all kind of wraps in together, so stay with me. Um, 
what I want to speak to is about the Elohim. So let's talk about the Elohim. Elohim were the first creation, the very first creation of Source once everything expanded and exploded and did all those fun things. Yeah, so from that first expansion of light, the Elohim, the first children of, of the One, of Source, um, this, the book that I'm reading is referring to God the Father a lot. It's using a lot of that language. At first it was hard for me, but I, I'm, I'm getting, I can use it if I need to, but we all know that masculine, feminine qualities, God the Father, God the Mother, anyway, combined one source. Um, so what it's speaking about is the Elohim, how um, some of them were, would be considered fallen, um, fallen beings of light, fallen creator gods. Um, that went to create in self-service versus uh, unified uh, service to the one, to God the Father, God the Mother, um, and how those beings were allowed to insert their own matrix within the matrix of Earth. The word used in the session years ago was envelope, which had never heard even that term used before, but in, this, uh, in the Book of Knowledge, they're using the term envelope a lot to describe different structures, um, how information is stored, um, how it moves through the multiverse. The term envelope is used a lot. So anyway, this false grid, this false matrix was allowed to be installed around this planet, and as we incarnate, we have to pass through this matrix. So as you pass through this matrix, you inherently pick up the qualities of that matrix. And this is a duality-based matrix. Um, so there's a right, wrong, judgment, you know, sin and redemption thing going on. Um, and so as you pass through, even those of us that um, have attained super pure states, I know... I know of several of my lifetimes, and a lot of them have already been ascended lifetimes here on this planet. And so when I came in, I, I picked up a lot of the collective stuff. I picked up stuff from my family. I picked up stuff from the places that I was in. And I'm working through those things now. They're still very much there. I've got a lot of I've got anger. I've got ju uh, judgment. Um, I've got <laughs> – what else do I have going on here? Um, arrogance. That's a big one that I've got. <laughs> working on it though, being careful with myself, uh, humble with myself, but it is, you know, I picked up a lot. And, and all of us did, all of us, once we passed through that matrix, that false dark grid, if you will, we picked up a lot of density, a lot of programs that aren't even ours, okay? So already we started off with work to do. Um, so within that matrix, we're in this place now where we're raising our vibration and dismantling this matrix. Not that we need to focus on dismantling the matrix, we simply need to rise in our vibration to amplify the power of God force, Goddess force within ourselves, and to share these universal, beautiful truths with our fellow um, humans here on the planet so that we can help amplify their light that they're holding. And as we do this, more and more of that grid falls away, and this new, harmonic, unified, resonant, cohesive grid is being put together. Now, what I want to speak to is because some of the somebody had asked me about what do I do about judgment. So, something that I was reading about in the in the book of knowledge was that hmm, there's two definitions of peace. One, on the Earth, 3D version, we consider peace as being without war of some kind, right? There's no war happening in or around us. This peace isn't found by peace treaties. This peace, the ultimate peace that we search for, is found by allowing the God, Goddess force to move through us and to open our heart and to open our awareness, to open our, and as I'm saying that, woo, energy is moving through my body, to open our senses, to co-mingle, to dance with, to sing with, to mm, celebrate the light, to be connected in our awareness, in our conscious awareness with the beauty of creation. This is where the ultimate peace comes from. So what that means is we will not have true and lasting peace on this planet because we operate from the third dimensional um, mindset. So 
true and ultimate peace won't be happening until Gaia switches into fourth density, until we shift into the fifth dimensional awareness and higher. This is when true peace is really going to happen. So we're just going to be dealing with our demons here. We're going to be dealing with our shadows, and that's just part of it. So you don't have to beat yourself up about it. You don't have to, you know, what is it? Flagellate, flagellate, what is it called? You know, when they're whipping themselves, we don't have to do that. We just kind of have to surrender to it, drop, allow that God goddess force into our heart, expand, open, hold compassionate space for ourselves. Just like, hmm, just like you could imagine Yeshua ben Joseph doing, just like you can imagine God, Mother, Father, God doing, just holding our, holding us as a child, holding us with complete compassion, taking us by the hand and saying, you know, it's okay, it's okay, you're doing really well. Okay, and just being really gentle and, and, and support ourselves as we move through this. So judgments, judgment is going to be here. We're, we're in that place where we're judging what's good, what's, what's not so good, um, what's ultimately best for us. Um, and some of those judgments that we're holding that like create that really heavy feeling where it creates a feeling of separation in our experience, that feeling of separation is just part of being here. But what we can do, instead of being mad that we have or, or judging ourselves for holding judgment against whoever or whatever, we can just witness, perceive the judgment, see where it's coming from. It may even feel, have a charge within the body. You can bring your hands there and cast light as you call in that God force, Goddess force energy into your body. You can bring light into that place that's holding that belief system. Breathe into it and simply choose a new direction. Now, if you find yourself already having judged somebody or maybe you even did something with that judgment and acted harshly again come back to that compassionate sense you may need to make amends just to reach out to that um, to that person that being and say hey you know I was in a state of judgment and I'm sorry if I caused any any hurt and I love you and I'm working on it or whatever you need to do but it's okay you're you're allowed to do that. That's why you came to the planet, was to experience those polarities, those contrasts. So just be gentle with yourself. There's a saying, oh, maybe I want to read this now. So this is coming from one of the books that I was reading, um, the book that I'm writing. Um, let me find it. So this came from a session. Um, so when he was explaining this, he was inside of a cell. He was transported in his regression to stand within a cell. Um, and what he was saying while he was in this cell is he was kind of explaining how micro, macro, this and that, how it's all, how we're all part of the cells of that one creative force. Anyway, what he was saying is, okay, the human consciousness is programmed to believe it is helpless. It must beg for survival. It must beg in a deficient world to be deserving to exist. The majority of people in this world, including the one that is inhabiting this body, the client, are lost in the seduction of begging, of the hope that if one asks the right questions or performs the right dance, they will receive the grand prize. They will be reunited, reunited with what they believe they have lost or have been separated from. What is the truth of that search, I asked? That the inherent living cell, it is the truth of who we are, is projecting and creating a perception of loss and lack, simply a shade that creates a container for which to experience the truth and enlightenment um, in conscious awareness. Moreover, the conscious investment and responsibility of, rec of creating, of giving, of cycling energy, because energy automatically does, Utilizing resistance to simply give form and function to a radiance that needs no direction or knowledge to express itself. To create is to allow and direct and marvel of the perfection of who I am, who you are. So there could be nothing to beg for, for whatever desire arises is simply an invitation to express and to experience that degree or level of consciousness. So we can... What does that mean for me? What that means for me is that we can recognize that that's just part of the condition of like begging or wanting, like we had to get the job or go to college or get the husband or have the children or get the house, all that stuff, hoping that someday 
Someday we were going to be saved. Someday we were going to be loved or worthy of love or worthy of praise. But my dears, inherently that is what we are. We are worthy of all of that love because it is the absolute fabric that creates our entire body. It is the light that holds our cells in function. It is the light that moves blood through our bodies. It is the light that is our breath moving in and out of our body. It is us. That is what we are. We don't have to do anything to deserve that love. So what happens when you empower somebody to feel that, when you acknowledge the God-Goddess within that person and, and uplift it, bring it out, encourage it, nourish it? How many systems would fall apart if we already knew that we were worthy of so much, more than we could ever even imagine? That the universe, God, Goddess, all that is, wants to constantly be bathing us in appreciation, in love, in care, in compassion, in support, in magic. This is just this is what the universe wants to do, but because we're in this free will environment of planet Earth right, in this duality-based thing where we have this opportunity to choose which path, which place that we focus, we have to ultimately continue to focus on that loving path, open up to it, know that we're worthy of it, and then everything else begins to shift. Okay, so if there are any questions or anything that you um, want to share, I, I want to also be responding to comments and things like that. Okay. And um, I hope that was coherent, what I said. There was a little bit of not clear for me. But, okay, so moving into this judgment thing. So I, you might want to look up a YouTube video. Um, it has to do with the Essenes, E-S-S-E-N-E-S. -E -E and I think it's the seven mirrors of um, relationships or something like that. And I think the first mirror is that what you're seeing in another is something that you hold within yourself that needs to be cleaned, cleared, balanced, whatever. So that's the first thing that you're seeing with the judgment. But maybe it's something that you're, maybe if it's not that, if you know for sure that it's not within you, then it's something that you judge. That's the mirror number two. Okay, so that's just what life is bringing to you. So if you are experiencing judgment, if you're experiencing a way of making yourself above or below, because remember we have that original drop that we're not worthy and we're trying to find that worthiness. We've forgotten that we are worthy. <laughs> okay, so just realize that it's there. See, is it in me? Or is it something that I hold judgment about and that's okay? And see if you can make your way into more compassionate thinking about this person. Okay, so maybe they're not a whatever, Maybe they're trying the best that they can right now with where they are, with the resources. Maybe they're having a tough day. Maybe I can be a little nicer to them. And just move your way ever so gently into a more compassionate space holding for this person and realign with that goddess, goddess, the God-Goddess force within yourself and stand there as a witness to just see how you want to choose to engage in that stimulus that's coming to you through the environment. Okay, so the next thing that I want to talk about is the Great White Brotherhood, which the Keys of Enoch calls it the Great White Brotherhood a lot. And of course, I'm missing my sisters, so you can call it the Great White Sisterhood or Brotherhood, if you will. Um, so these beings um, are, are beings that have achieved like very high levels of consciousness while incarnated. So they came, um, I think, I don't know if they're all from Earth, they've all been to Earth, or blah, 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 and how involved everyone is with Earth. But basically these beings have um, achieved a very high level of consciousness, and so they've been helping the Earth evolve over a long period of time, since that fall, since that distortion really happened. So the Great White Brotherhood does things like incarnate as Moses to deliver the teachings of light, the Torah Or. Um, comes in as Buddha, to deliver the teachings of uh, Buddhism, or as Elisha, to come and teach about the one God and about the Merkaba, our, mm, our vehicle of light that exists around us as we awaken, that we can use to travel with our body outside of this world into other universes, into other realities. Okay, so this is something else, if you haven't started researching the Merkaba, start doing this, 
um, and start getting yourself more familiar with the language of it. Um, start studying it more. I know Drumvalo Melchizedek has a lot of information out there about it. I'm not so connected to his teachings, so I can't validate them. Um, but there are some good teachings out there to at least explain what the Merkaba is. Okay, but the point is, what I was reading in the keys um, was that it's not necessary to just follow the teachings of Jesus. That's what the Christian church is teaching. You have to like do all these things that have to do with Jesus. Jesus is part of the Great White Brotherhood for sure. Um, uh, but any of those ascended masters, exalted goddesses, that are delivering these messages of teachings, messages and teachings of love, of unity, of oneness, as we align, you may have other ascended beings that you're feeling called to that are working with you, and you like their way of explaining oneness and unity, or their way of uh, speaking about love. But they're, in that book that's really explaining, any of them will do. You know, you have plenty to choose from, lots of beauty to, to source from. So do a little bit of research about the, about the exalted goddesses, about the ascended masters, the great white brotherhood, and just start to get more familiar with who they are. And there's a lot of different perceptions of who they were, like in human form. Um, I wouldn't get so caught up in that kind of stuff. I would get more into the vibration of the teachings that they carry and that they share. Um, let me see if there's any comments here. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, so now we're moving into the... Um, ah, so this book has been a big thing about, uh, for me, about healing my religious wounding and my resistance, maybe my fear of what people, what some of you might think if I really start using more... Um, Jewish language, if I'm using more Christian related material, and I'm just inviting all of us to go a little bit deeper into that wounding and to see where our aversions are so that we can source from those teachings, from these really incredible um, messages of light and love and unity, and be able to source from them what we need, what is helpful, what is nourishing, and to allow those parts of ourselves that are still resistant to religions um, to look at that a little bit closer so that we can come into that neutrality. This is, okay, so this is coming with the neutrality thing, um, which is a message from Jesus. I'm gonna to read to you from some of my session from the book, okay. So what was happening here, some of you may have heard me read this before, the client, uh, John, the beloved brother of Jesus, he's standing in front of the cross um, and they're crucifying Jesus. So he's in front of his teacher and he's crying, 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 crying because the most beautiful thing he's ever seen is being crucified in front of him. They're killing his teacher. Yeshua ben Joseph. Over and over and over again he was saying, Yeshua ben Joseph, Yeshua ben Joseph, and crying. So at a certain point, the light body of, of Yeshua comes out, or Jesus. By the way, Jesus, I believe, is Greek for son of Zeus, interestingly enough. His real name, Yeshua. Uh, so Yeshua's uh, energy body comes out, and I have this conversation with him. Now, while I'm having this session, the session, my hair is standing straight up on my body. Sweat was pouring out of me. The amount of love energy, unlike love that I've ever experienced here on the earth plane, totally surrounded me, flowed through me. It was as I was asking these questions, I could barely even ask a question. I couldn't even get my mind to focus because it, the vibration was so high that I was just like unable to really understand what was being said to me or find the words to ask questions. But I did get some good questions in there. So this one I said, there's a lot of conflict in our modern world about who you were and the messages you brought and what we should do to really be like Christ. Can you tell me what that is? What is it really like to be Christ-like? It is like the most simple way to be. Everything complicated, and the perception of complication is no longer interesting. When it is accepted, it is a beautiful game, as an intellectual stimulus, perhaps, to explore complication. But as we become to be addicted to the sense of value and worth, that we believe comes from complication of creating difficult and complex problems that require complex solutions. And that garners the value and worth that allows us to seemingly assimilate a deserving what we're begging for. When this interest 
preoccupation that the idea of value and worth through complication ceases and the simplicity of the moment unposed in its majesty, that is what it's like to be Christ, a child of God that is the fullness of God that has been liberated from the connection to and the idea of pain, that looks upon the kingdom of heaven on earth with a single eye and notices that even as the resistance believes that it is falling from heaven, that it is fighting against, rejecting its very nature, it is still hurtling its way home. When you learn to hear that one message, no matter what is spoken, that is when you find Christ. And so this is what I'm speaking about when we're, when we're catching ourselves in, let's say, a judgment pattern, okay? And there's this wrestling around, there's this complication of the mental energies, the judgment, the da 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 I've got to act like this, I've got to do this to make it right, blah, 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 blah. All of that still pulling you into a sense of separation, wanting to be like Christ. If you want to drop really into that Christ self, pull back in. Come into that still place, that place where you are fulfilled, that place where you are full, nourished, nothing to do, nothing to beg for, nothing to repent. Come into that place of grace. It's there. It wants to hold you. It is holding you. It's still, you are still hurtling your way into your ascension, into your awakening as the one. Yeah, so the other thing that people ask is, am I off the path? Am I on the path or am I off the path? Am I doing the right thing? Of course you are. There are many, many roads that lead to Rome. There are many, many pathways that lead to the one. This is the infinite way. There are so many pathways to get it. And just because you're, you may be doing some things that are, you know, you're acting out of your shadow or doing certain things, it doesn't mean that you're outside of the divine plan. You're still within it. You're still moving through it. You're still supporting it. So just drop those judgments, even just for a moment, come back into that place of stillness, absolute fullness, open up to that God light. Release the mind, let the clouds of your mind just move aside. Or let them be there. They're okay, they don't need to do anything. We don't need to compliment it. <laughs> okay. So, boom, 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 boom. The other thing that was brought up, um, somebody mentioned in the New Earth Ascending community page, which there are links inside the thing if you haven't been there yet, um, was talking about noticing that more people are passing away in his, in his life and then also hearing a, a lot about people passing away. And I've been speaking about this for months now. Um, we are in that time. We're getting ready for some major, major movement on the planet. We're in that gestation page, uh, place. We're in that like final birthing, you know, pains, like getting ready to launch that baby out. Okay. So as that's preparing, there are souls here that are, okay, so each soul has multiple exit plans. If you take this road, it's like a choose your own ending book. Okay, if I choose this road, then I'll exit out here in these conditions with this situation. If I follow this path, then I'll exit this way. So death is planned. It is part of your contract. It's like part of the like drafting of what you're going to do and then run in and forget everything <laughs> and try to remember it all. Okay, so these people that are leaving the planet, whether it's suicide, maybe even accidental drug overdose, maybe even heart attack, aneurysm, rapid growing cancer, freak accidents, um, or also just dying of old age. They just simply fade out. This is okay. This is part of this plan. This is part of what's happening. Um, they have decided that, you know, on a higher level, they've let their human know that it's time to exit the earth plane, exit the earth school. And so the situations happen. Um, So you're going to be seeing more and more of this. This is also going to happen with groups. So groups are going to leave at the same time. And that's going to happen through natural disaster things. Um, you could call them false flag events that are happening. Those like things that um, you know cause a bunch of chaos. These are still serving the collective. This these mass exits of the earth plane are creating circumstances for the other people that are involved to come more closely connected to their God self, goddess self, to find others, to 
uh, share compassion, to share support with community members that are going through it. These people that are leaving are giving us nourishment to come together in unity. Um, doesn't mean that it's not hard, um, but when you embrace life eternal, check out Jesus' teachings, he's talking about it a lot. Um, when you're really truly embracing oneness and life eternal, that we're just coming in for a human experience, but most of us is a soul, most of us is a light, most of us is part of and connected to the all consciously. We just exit the plan. So you can change your relationship um, with the physical death experience and come into it's it might seem cold to people because we've so believed that we die that's and and there's so much misinformation out there about what happens to us when we leave the body that there's so much emotional stuff about it and so much societal pressure about how you're supposed to be when somebody's sick how you're supposed to be when somebody leaves their body and um, so you know do what you need to do um, to support those around you, but you don't have to get dragged into the drama and make it complicated and do a whole bunch of fussy stuff. You can, again, come back into that Christ state, into that unified, everything's good, everything is part of the all, I am here to witness this. And let it do its thing. Are our animals here to assist the ascension process? They will be raising with us into new earth correct you know sylvia i've asked that question before with some sessions and i can't there's been so many different um answers about that um but i will talk about yes they are here to help with the ascension process so often a guide or a loved one will send a part of themselves down to be an animal or to be a pet of some kind, um, to be with us, to be our little guardian that's helping to clean and clear the energy. So often, um, let's say there's a lot of anger in the household or someone's holding a lot of anger. Maybe your pet, your dog, comes in to show you so much love and to help you play and, and you know connect to your childlike um, spirit, but also is absorbing a lot of that energy. And so that dog may pass away from something like cancer because that cancer would have been yours or your partner's or your child's or whatever, but that animal has come in and done a service, uplifted the spirit, took out the dark energy, and then developed its things and exit and go when you're ready, of course, right? So the animal passes away. When they know that it's time for you to move into the next lesson and you don't need the training wheels, of their presence with you anymore. Um, okay, so some of you may also notice about the animals that are coming back. So there's a lot of uh, news stories going around about um, animals that have thought to be long extinct that are resurfacing again. Now this is going to happen more and more and more as we move into this because the vibration of the earth is shifting and getting higher. So the dimension that those beings are still being held in, that the codes of that being that was inserted into the earth matrix, they still exist in a higher realm. They still, they're still there. And as we awaken as, yes, dra dragons and unicorns, all of them, I was actually just uh, re-listening to a session about dragons. So you're gonna start experiencing them again, maybe not physically right at first, but you may experience them telepathically in your dreams, out of the corners of your eyes, in your own heart, in your space of knowing. Um, so, yeah, there's going to be more of those things coming about. I have heard a couple things. One is that, yes, the animals go with you, but I want you to also realize, because when I say this, sometimes people get really heartfelt and sad, like, oh, I'm going to miss my pets, because I have heard also that at first there aren't animals going there. Um, I've heard that. And now the sadness that one might experience while receiving that news, realize that that sadness doesn't exist in the fifth dimension. And, and higher. You won't be experiencing that. At the higher perspective, you understand the role and the purpose and the bigger picture and all that kind of stuff. So it's not going to have, <laughs> do I need a haircut? I just got one. <laughs> okay. So um, the other thing that I want to talk about is the equinox. Somebody wanted me to comment on the equinox energies. Um, or the upcoming energies. So check out spaceweather.com. Check out the on the side, on the left-hand side, there's little pictures of the sun um, telling you when solar wind streams are going to come in. Uh, up at the top, it shows the speeds 
around 400, uh, I think, kilometers per second. I generally start getting headaches around 450, 500. I'm getting some heart stuff. As it moves higher and higher, more things are happening, dreams and all that kind of stuff. So that's some places you can check. Um, but the equinox is going to be, um, I believe, very, very powerful. Um, all of these windows, all of these alignments that we're moving through are going to become more and more and more charged, more transformation. So what I can, um, <laughs> what I can recommend is that you um, gather together with loved ones and like-minded people during those times and set some really beautiful prayers into that ground. Connect with the source. Um, connect with the God Goddess and call it in and anchor it into the planet with your with your loved ones and open to receive. Release your expectations. Just be witness to the energy as it moves through and around you. Okay. So, okay. So I think that's kind of it about what I wanted to speak about. I feel like I've done a good job of checking people's notes. Um, a few other things. So Ron and I started, for lack of a better word, it's because it's what this is my own judgment stuff, trauma, okay, clearing that out of the way. So we started a church before we left Ashland. Um, we started, it's a nonprofit. We meet uh, most of these points that you need to meet to, um, there's like 14 points that you need to meet to be considered a church, to be, to file for this ability to be a nonprofit organization. So we, we did it. We applied, we have the, um, we have the church, it's called New Earth Ascending, um, and we, while here, uh, we have been writing the bylaws, the principles, the, um, you know, the, the structure, what really supports the church, how do people become ministers, um, so that's going to include the, um, first and foremost, individual spirituality and personal relationship with your creator, however you can do that, that's a huge part, <laughs> um, and uh, the spiritual principles that are inherent and found in all spiritual traditions, such as loving kindness, compassion, presence, dedication, self-study, all of that kind of stuff, all the things you wish that your religion had growing up, we put all that together, <laughs> and, um, and it's part of the New Earth Ascending um, philosophy. We just, might, just like the Unitarian Universalist movement, there is... Um, a appreciation for world religions, for philosophy, for science, um, for quantum physics, for channeling, for all these kinds of things. Whatever can support our awakening, our remembering, our loving, um, we honor all of that. So there's going to be more information coming out over the next couple weeks as Ron and I really solidify that. Embodied light one, two, and three are going to play a big part of it. Um, as that Bible says, there's going to be lots of laying of hands, lots of light coming in from the light workers. So we want to train people to go out to spread the word, uh, spread universal truth, and to lay hands and to cast light into this world and do all the beautiful things that you in your heart know that you want to do here on the planet. So there's going to be more coming out. There's a basic website, newearthascending.org. What I really want to suggest is that everybody that watches these Facebook things to join the New Earth Ascending community page. You can find that link in here. Um, there's going to be a way for people to make donations to support the ministry, to support the church, and we're going to be very transparent about how those funds are used, um, whether it's starting other, organ other churches and other places around the world, which I do feel is going to be a part of that. Um, but ultimately, you know, we, we know that we are here to build this community, this city of light. Um, so the book is going to support that as well. The funding from people buying the books or donating, you'll be able to donate monthly, weekly, whatever, annually, and it will just automatically go. Um, that way we can use those funds to help people. And I'm sure we're going to be meeting more and more people along the way that are going to help us organize that and, um, and to implement, you know, what what a church really was meant to do, um, what uh, Yeshua, Mary Magdalene, and John, and all the disciples, Anna, the grandmother, what they all were setting the foundations for, what the, you know, the great brotherhood of light, um, the great white brotherhood, all of these star families that have been coming here for so long to help support the awakening of humanity and the restoration of Gaia, um, this is really what this church is dedicated to. Um, 
so the book will be coming out soon. I think there's going to be some like kind of like soft release kind of things. So stay tuned for that. Um, yeah, I think that's about it. So it's exciting. There's lots coming in. That's why we're so quiet. We haven't been doing so many videos, or you know, um, because we're really working on this big project because we we want to be ready for what's coming. And um, yeah, okay. So I'm sending you all so 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 much love. If you want to support our work. Um, there's a PayPal link inside. There's also a Venmo thing if you do that. Um, what really helps is sharing universal truth. Share these messages um, that we make, these videos, the posts that we make. All of this is so, so, so important. Um, you know, before these big earth changes really start to happen here, we have technology, we have internet, we have electricity. Let's utilize our devices and get the information and teachings out. Um, okay. I love you all. I did it. I was so nervous. I didn't know if I'd be able to <laughs> to do one of these. It's been so long. So I love you all. Much more is coming. See you on the New Earth Ascending community page. Sending you a lot of love. Bye.